So it calculates the entire object, whether or not we're going to see the entire object. So it's not quite as effective, or efficient, I should say, as z-buffering algorithms where it only goes one, the pixels that are needed. And if you're going to z-buffer it, you're going to take up a lot of memory because you have to store all of the pixel information. A lot more information than storing shape information. Shape information can be automatically generated from a few points to, to create a shape. And uh, less memory intensive, but not as accurate. <laughs> so each one of them has, each one of them is used, but has pros and cons essentially to it. Texture mapping very popular, supported in mostly all graphic applications. You take a wireframe, and instead of putting an artificial color, a shade, a light, or something on it, you put a graphics file. You put a picture. So texture mapping is very popular to make realism. So you can put the actual person's face on the robot. You can actually do it in a 3D fashion, so you have the ears on the sides and the, you know, everything proportioned correctly for a human. You can make a pretty realistic 3D model of a human by using texture mapping. So real objects contain subtle changes in both the color and the orientation that you can't get with color and lighting models. So we can't model these objects with tons of little triangles to capture these changes. So modeling uh, would be too hard and the rendering would be too time consuming. So we use texture mapping to simulate it. So texture mapping handles changes in color. So here's an example where we have a model with a normal size polygons and then we have a map with a 2D image onto the polygons. So we take this picture and map it onto this surface. Actually that one does show up. Okay, and then we get this model here. More realistic coloring, more realistic shaping. Because the other thing that Sly didn't point out is we might have some imperfections. We might have some inconsistencies. We might have some detail we can't show pixel by excuse me, polygon by polygon, that we can show more realistically with an image. So it, it adds a little bit more realism to it overall. Um, there's a cost to it, however. You're taking a big old image, and you're storing it in a graphics file, <laughs> and you're mapping the big old image. So you want to make sure you have light, small little images. You can paint polygon by polygon, or you can paint object by object. So if you're making, let's say, a wood floor, It'd be a really nice idea to take a picture of wood and texture map it onto a wireframe of a floor, you know, maybe with boards or something. And then uh, you'd have a very realistic looking floor. Same thing as, a, as the earth. So the stages of texture mapping, there's four different stages of texture mapping. You can obtain the texture parameters of the space coordinates from the 3D coordinates using a projector function. So we're projecting. We're going to get the coordinates that we're going to map. Then you map the texture parameter space using the texture image, whatever it is you're going to apply to it. Coordinates using the corresponding function to map it. And this is all built in for you, by the way. Now we just say texture map. And the function is doing this for you. You could sample using a sampling technique the you know, textured image at the computed texture space coordinates to see if it fits, to see if it overlaps. And then you have blending. So the blending takes it and makes it so that the object color is even and it doesn't overlap or fall short in terms 